good morning everyone. And my name is Juan Carlos Melgar. Um, I'm an associate professor at Clemson University and I've been working with uh, Zach Knight, who is uh, an extension agent at the Coastal Rec in Charleston. And over the last three years, we put together this uh, trial. Last year, if you were here, we talked about it. Uh, and, and this year, we have some, some more information, uh, especially on the, on, on, you know, after the, the winter freeze, we had the Christmas Eve uh, frost we have. Well, I know that the acoustics here are not great. I have an accent. I'm originally from Spain. So slow me down if I'm going too fast or just uh, raise your hands and I can repeat whatever. So, yes, we, we put together this project because, as you know, well, we think that there are a lot of opportunities for South Carolina citrus. Uh, there is a big interest in uh, South Carolina grown products strongly niche market, especially along the coast with all the tourism. There are a lot of interesting things, specialty citrus. And then the decline of citrus in, in Florida. I mean, we have seen that in Georgia, how the acreage has grown in Georgia exponentially, uh, mostly with satsumas, um, and, and especially because of the decline of production of uh, uh, citrus in Florida, right? But then we do have some limitations. Greening disease has been found in South Carolina. We do not expect that it's going to go up and, and, and you know, explode as in Florida. And we can talk about, uh, about that more later if you want to. Um, but that's definitely something to consider. And then the, the big one, or the second one here, the one that we're going to focus today, it's uh, cold limitations. Uh, frost, we get really. Uh, low temperature sometimes, and that limits us on what we can grow and we cannot grow. So we got this grant from the South Carolina Department of Agriculture three years ago, <coughs> and the goal of this was uh, to evaluate and promote cold hardy citrus uh, for South Carolina. And so the first objective, we have three objectives. The first one was assessing the tree performance. We as you're going to see, we've got lots of species and varieties, and so tree performance for growth, yield, and definitely cold tolerance. Uh, and then we, got, we also wanted to look at if, if, if we see any, any greening, any psyllids, uh, and disseminate the results that we, we find. So the, the orchard was planted in 2021. It's, uh, it's in front of the Coastal Research and Extension Center. There is a, a, a big extension office there. I mean, you can identify immediately that they have a huge garden, a bee pollinator garden uh, that you can see from the road. Uh, and so that's where we have uh, the orchard again planted three years ago or two years ago and a half. We have 32 varieties, uh, mostly on <coughs> rootstocks, carrizo and ruby doll, even though we have some on. on on their own feet, uh, a total of 98 plants in this, in this orchard. So we have a good collection of uh, satsumas, clementines, mandarins, uh, of course the wari, brown select, miho, uh, mineola. Then we have um, some, we put some grapefruits, uh, a few lemons, we have a mayor, eureka, and harvey lemon, and then a few oranges. Uh, and then others, kumquats, there's a, there was interesting kumquats because all the, the literature says that it's one of the most cold tolerant, so I said, let's, let's see how they do there. Finger limes, we know that they don't do well in cold, you know, with cold weather, but the, the, the goal of this plot was also, you know, there are going to be a lot of people coming. Actually, we had yesterday like a, a few day there, uh, backyard growers, people that had a garden, and, and the goal is to show also what does not work. So that people don't, you know, don't go into and spend money in things that, that they don't want. Calamondi, so lots of stuff. And then we also have some that were not grafted. Uh, the Changsha tangerine, the Aichang lemon, uh, Yuzu, which it's very interesting for the, for the restaurant industry because of the lemon, I mean the Yuzu zest. And then a Citrange one. And so, a little bit of everything, 
2022, one year later, trees were growing well. We started measuring tree growth as well, like trunk cross-sectional area, like trunk diameter. We're measuring that every year, see how they're growing. Uh, trees started producing, uh, of course, first year very little, but, you know, I mean, second year on the ground, we're starting to see things there. This is how uh, some of the best ones are looking in, in August this year. This is, again, after the frost, and now we're going to talk about what happened with, uh, with the frost. So, yeah, it was uh, Christmas Eve uh, that we got this cold front uh, throughout the entire South Carolina. And there at the wreck, at that facility, it was at 65, 16, sorry, 16.5 Fahrenheit for several hours. And then it kept being under 32 for several days. So it, it, it got cold, right? I don't know I mean, in the areas where you are at, how cold it how got, like in, in, up there in Clemson it was like 9 Fahrenheit, so it was really cold. We actually have two trees in Clemson. We had a kumquat in uh, Satsuma and they both died uh, at this very little farm that we had there. So, it is, before getting into there, we talked about that a, a little bit last year. It is very difficult, uh, you know, to, to evaluate for cold tolerance when you don't have a frost like this one. We don't want that to happen, but when it happens, it helps us. <laughs> but if it doesn't happen, it is hard to, to do that. We set up a, a, a protocol to do that in the, in, in the lab. What we do is we collect leaf samples. Again, this is in the lab, and it's not perfect, but it helps us comparing varieties. So what we do is we collect leaf samples, we punch some leaf discs and put them in test tubes. Okay? And put these test tubes into cold water bath. We start at 32 and then we start going down 2 degrees every hour. And when there is a, these, you know, a frost or these cold temperatures, the cells that are inside the leaves, they, they break. The, the cell membranes break up. And all the solutes, everything that is inside comes out. So we want to know what, at what temperature that happens. Okay? So even though what we do in the lab is not exactly what happens in the field, you know, it's not that it's going two degrees every hour, but again, by doing everything the same, all the varieties the same, we can compare how they work. So what we are trying to find is what's the point where all those solutes that are inside the cells come out. Okay? Uh, and so, based on that, we, we evaluated all these varieties. In 2022, that was, again, before the frost, January 2022. Also because I work with students, I cannot give them a project and I'm, you know, without knowing if this is going to happen in the field or not. And so we saw, for example, the Meyer level, one of the, you know, a lot of, interested in, uh, a lot of people are interested in Meyer level, uh, gave us 22. And I think, again, that these values compared to the field are lower than what happens in the field. But what's important here is the ranking, you know? Like what, that's better than gold. Uh, the gold nugget mandarin, uh, it was at 20.7. The tango mandarin was at 20.1. And then we go into the satsumas, we have the brown select and the wari. It got between 19, and, and this is, I say between because we have several sets of trees between 19.4 and 20.7. 20, 20 we have different soil amendments in there, like some had mulch, some don't have it. So we wanted to see how the soil management affected. And so it was between that range. And then the usual was at 19, 19.2. The Aichang level was one of the lowest ones, 17, between 17 and 19. And then the Kumquat <coughs> was 16, 16.3. So we were very excited with that, with that one. That matched with what we had seen in the literature. We did it again in December, like one year later. That was December before the frost. That was early December. Plants here are not so acclimated as the previous year that we did it in January. They have been in you know, cold temperatures a month, uh, a month later. So here, values are a little bit higher because again, they are not so acclimated. Now, pretty much the ranking was the same. Meyer level was around there, then we had the mandarins, around 21, uh, the satsumas, 
and the use of where kind of in, in, in the middle, 18 to 20, and the action level, 18.5. But then we had the frost, again, at the end of December. This is a picture that uh, our extension agent, Zack Snipes, took on January 3rd, as soon as he, he go back to work. And there were lots of trees with brown leaves. And so he did an evaluation uh, doing some ratings, uh, and we're going to see those numbers. But there were lots of trees uh, looking like that. And it's interesting because in, in some cases, for some species, it is a, a, a mechanism of defense. Get the brown leaves, but the tree was not dead. You know, it, it, it's going to come back. Some other ones were dead. I mean, these are the finger lines. Those were completely <laughs> torched. <laughs> Done. Uh, so yes, yeah, some were doing better, some less, but let's look at the damage ratings. So what he did was, if there was no damage, um, give it a one. If it was 100% damage, 100% torch, uh, give it a 10. And then anything in between, like 50% brown leaves, a five, okay? So it was just a visual rating done at the beginning of January. We don't know what's gonna happen yet. And so the level, the Aisha level, we got a two. That was the best rating. Then we had the Kishumandri and the Niho Satsumas that got a 2.3. Uh, and then the other Satsumas, the Brown Select and the Uwari got a 2.7. So those were our best performers, again, in, in leaf damage. Then we have some other ones around 5 and 6. And we have Samokan, the Shishan, Satsuma. The Kukwat was given us, I mean, he saw a 6, so about 60% brown leaves, more damage than we expected. Yuzu as well at 6, and the ugly, uh, which is this uh, Japanese uh, tango, uh, got a 6. The Karamonding on the higher level 6.3, and then we're getting into higher numbers, the Shunai Mandarin, the, which is the Sumo. The Sumo got a 6.7, Karakara 7. Now, if we look at it three months later in March, going back to the field and seeing what was dead or alive, let's see if it's alive, got an A, if it's a dead, that plant is a B. There were three, or there are three plants of each, uh, in each plot that we have, it's three plants of each species, okay? So for example, for the, just to understand, Kishu Mandarin, there were two dead and one alive, okay? That's why it says, D2, A1. And then slash, it's the Niho Satsuma that will be the three of them alive. Okay? And that's how the, the thing reads. <coughs> so the lemons, the Wari and Brown Select, they were all alive. The Niho Satsuma, they were all alive. And then we have a group here, the ones that were between five and six, that we get some dead, some alive. Now, look at these seven of the Karakara, or the 6.7 of the Shir 9. They were all alive. So that's why I'm saying sometimes it's like, it's kind of like strategy. Get the leaves dead, but the tree is alive, okay? And so those were performing better than, than we expected. And now look at the kukwa, the muwa kukwa, the three of them were dead. So even though in the lab they looked really promising, they did not look good in the field. Uh, so these give us some, some of the winners and losers here. I put in green, in a green box, the ones that the three plants that we had there were alive. Okay? Of course, these are young trees. Uh, I mean, when, when we planted them, probably they were between a year and a half or two years old. And then they have grown, I mean, they're now about four years old. A mature tree is going to perform better. I mean, a lot of people, you know, Things of Meyer Lemon, for example, how, yeah, it could if it's a mature tree, it's going to do it much better in the field than if it's a young tree. Young trees are very susceptible. And, it, it, you know, it's going to be very interesting to see how they grow. And in, I don't know, three, five years, if we had any of the event, or we can repeat this in the lab, see how much better they do than now. But again, for trees just planted a couple of years ago, this, was what, what, this is what we have seen. So these are in green, 
doing better again to use me, even though it was there, said, I said, what? They were all like. Now, there were some question marks, like the, the Shishan Satsuma, that there were two up to alive on one day. So, that could be okay. I did not, I don't like the ones that are more dead than alive. Now let's, let's look at the, the other one that was performing better, I mean, worse in the rating, in the visual rating in January, from 7 <coughs> and up. So we have the Sugar Bell and the Tango Mandarins, the Garage Mandarins, uh, Marsh Peak Grapefruit, Gold Nugget and Pokemon Mandarin, they are between 8 and, seven, uh, 8 and 9, so again, a lot of leaf damage there, Valencia, a lot of it need damage, and then in the end, all the lemons and finger lines. But, again, let's look at the real, like, are these trees alive or not? Like, as, as uh, um, Zach always says, I mean, he read it in March, but sometimes you could wait till July or August and see if the trees are alive or not. <laughs> so, the mandarins were fine, I mean, the sugar bell and tango mandarins were fine, the three of them were alive. Uh, the Karaji Mandarin, two of them were alive and one was dead. And then uh, the grapefruits were dead. Uh, the Pokka Mandarin and the Valencia, two of them were alive. So they were not doing so bad, so even though again the, rating, the initial uh, visual rating was bad. So again, that's, that's why it's important not to go and cut them. Let's wait because they, they come back. And then of course all the, all the other levels of thicker lines, they were all dead. So, once again, out of this list, the only one that the three of them were alive were the Tango and the Sugar Bell Mandarins. And the ones that it was okay, some of them were a bit more were alive than the dead. I would include this Karaji Mandarin, Popcorn Mandarin, and Valencia. So overall, the, I mean, the, the oranges, Valencia and Caracara, they both got into the orange. The orange uh, category, let's say, uh, so they were doing okay. Now, as I said, we were measuring growth. This is how much, this is the difference in trunk diameter in between one year and the other one. And we see how the actual lemon is the one that is growing the fastest, like almost an inch. I put it in millimeters, so 25 millimeters, millimeters an inch. So almost an inch. Uh, then we have some of the Minho, I mean the Mandarins and the Satsumas, uh, that were some of them faster growing. Uh, Valencia, Yuzu, about a centimeter, a centimeter, and then all the other ones were growing slower, so less than less than ten millimeters. So overall, as recommendations, uh, based on, on these numbers again and these uh, ratings. Uh, lots of options for satsumas and mandarins that, that we put in green, that we have observed that they have been growing well, even under these conditions. Uh, some in orange, kind of like a little bit more of a doubt. We remove from the list the grapefruits, most of the lemons, um, let's say most of the good lemons, like the Aichan, you know, like it has, uh, it's not as, that's delicious, not the other one, but... And then, um, among the orange, we have Caracara and Dream that were, well, I didn't have Dream in the previous list because we have 93, but right? I have to summarize. But uh, they were doing well as well. And then Valencia, Hamlin, Samrocan, so-so. And among others, we kept Yuzu and Calamondi. Like, again, Yuzu performing well, Calamondi and so-so. But then, none of the... Uh, Kumquat, or finger lines, uh, uh, were alive. So as a summary, there are winners and there are losers. And among the, winner, the winners, we can include the Satsumas and some of the Mandarins. Among the losers, most lemons and grapefruits. Uh, tree health has been impacting this survival. We had, because of, like for protection of the trunk, uh, we put these corrugated pipes, kind of like this, this height. And that was a place where, you know, it's, it's a warm place in winter. So it's a place where ants uh, love to go. 
And so there were many of those tubes had a, 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 nine, a fire ant nest inside. And so there was damage there in the, in the base of the trunk. Like if, if, if when, when we remove it, we could see how the base of the trunk there has been damaged there by the ants. So that can also be, could, could have also been a, a factor in there, like, you know, making some trees more, like, weakened than others. We've had a lot of uh, uh, leaf miner as well. Have not seen any psyllid, no greening at all, trees other than that, they're looking fine. The only thing that you see is, is ants and, and, and uh, leaf miner. <coughs> and again, like, uh, the recommendation of, of, of waiting before taking out or cutting off some trees uh, from the freeze damage. Because again, what you see at the beginning, it is not an indication of what, if the tree is alive or dead, and the tree can come back. Of course, we have seen a lot of uh, uh, rootstock coming back. Uh, Carrizo has one of the parents is uh, Trifoliata, and that's quite cold tolerant. So we see a lot of, you know, the, the three leaves uh, coming from the rootstock coming back, but that's not, that's not what we want. And I just want to acknowledge, again, the Department of Agriculture uh, grant, Stan, John Trask, uh, Anthony Mirishiora, and Dr. S Dr. Katzberg, because they help us with letters of recommendations and support for, for this grant. And then the Coastal Rec, Chris Bud, which is an extension agent down there as well, that helped with planting and with uh, some of the field management, and the people in my lab in uh, yeah, at Clemson. And I don't know, that's, that's all I have. Do you have any questions or any thoughts, any experiences that you want to share with this? Yeah. yeah no question. Dr. Cabos, thank, thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, did you notice any correlation to the chosen rootstock to the death rate of the trees in the not in general, because they, we have pretty much, I mean, we have all, like, yeah, I mean, we cannot say that, like, all the three trees of a variety, they were almost in the same rootstock. Uh, but it is, uh, they're all over the place, like, uh, you know, some lemons have these, some they have the other ones. So we have not been able to say, yeah, these ones are doing better than the other ones. No. no. Yes. So, but yeah, yeah, yeah. wonderful presentation. Um, is there a way of testing out the cambium in the same kind of way that you're testing out the leaves? Uh, the leaves might have a, a more fragility, where the cambium um, might be a little more hardier, uh, where you know could uh, come out. Uh, yeah, uh, the problem, at least with that protocol that we use, is just as soon as. I didn't put any of the graphs, but as soon as you have some uh, intervention, in the case of leaves, it's just a punch. Right. You know, that leaf disc, which is like tiny, 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 but you know, we have cut around it. So you put that in the tube, there is already some, some, some stuff coming out there, you know. Mm -hmm. So our, our base temperature already has a little bit of leakage out. Again, that's it's an experimental error. Like, oh, you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, I, I do the same with, with peaches. I work with peaches, and I do the same with little fruitlets. Like, for us, mid-March is when we have little fruitlets. We cannot touch that, we cannot cut that fruitlet. It has to be the entire fruitlet. But even the fact that we remove the fruitlet, and there is a little scar, that gives us already some leakage, which is not, that's why that number, the number is not right. You know, it's not accurate. It serves us to compare, but not for. And so, in the sense of, in the, in, 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 uh, regarding your question, you know, if, if we cut, like if I cut a fruitlet, there is a lot of solutes going out. Yeah, okay. So that wouldn't work, and I have not seen any other way of measuring uh, without, you know, without cutting, without, that is not destructive yeah. for the plant. Uh, I know, and it could be interesting, uh, I know there is uh, some sensors that can, can measure sap flow. So maybe after, immediately after the frost, using some sensors can tell you much faster if the tree is moving sap or not. That would be something to, 
test, but I cannot think of any other easy way to do it. I don't know if you have any thought. <laughs> I don't know. Really. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really. I keep an eye on uh, in case any anybody has done anything like that, but I have not seen. It. And one thing I've noticed on mine that had died, my um, uh, karate that had died afterwards, I was waiting for it to come back. It was trying to come back, but there was a sudden um, intervention of ambrosia uh -huh. uh, oh, And yeah. I was wondering if you had trouble with that. So, in case uh, uh, the rest of the audience didn't hear. Here. Uh, he was mentioning that some trees, even though they didn't die, uh, there was a brosia beetle uh, because of the damage. The tree was weakened and, and you see the damage. We did not see anything here. Mm -hmm. I've seen it in my, in my own house, in my backyard. <laughs> These years, yeah, were, they were not citrus, but I had two trees that I had to cut out because it, it, they were weakened badly with a brosia beetle. Now, a brosia beetle also comes to trees that are. I mean, they always come to trees that are weakened. And in, in, in my case, it was that the frost made them very weak, and that's where the Russian beetle went. Uh, but in the field, here in Charleston, we didn't see anything. No. So that was, that's good. Any other thoughts or questions? Yes. Did you guys test the Thomasville Supreme Court? Yes, and I didn't put it in this, and I don't remember. I can look for it. And, uh, I, I can give you my, or I mean, or tell him, tell Stan maybe what was the result. Because I don't, I didn't put it in the presentation and I don't remember. Uh, maybe he can share with you, or, or you can get my email and I can get you the result. One other statement for a question. I know Florida developed something called like a sun dragon. It's an orange substitute that they bred tricolian in somewhere in the lineage. Um, to make it resistant against citrus greening disease. Have you ever thought about trying uh, something with trifoliate parentage to see if you could do dormancy even at a very slight uh, parentage within the, something that's more edible? Yeah, uh, well, the, the thing is that I don't, I don't work, I, my, my, right. yeah, my position is mostly on peaches. Right. So I only have this little project on citrus, right. so I do not, and, and up there in Clemson, I do not work with citrus, but um, yeah, the people at Florida are the ones who are working on, on that, so yeah, I haven't. But it, it makes sense, I mean, sometimes what they do is like, what they call back crossing, like they cross, but then they cross again with the, with the species that you want, so that there is less percentage of the, let's say in this case, trifoliata. Better fruit Uh-huh. Of the, uh huh, uh huh. But yeah, in this case, I don't, I cannot help with that. Thank you. Uh -huh. Do you have any? I don't know. I thought it could be a good um, timing too for for exchanging. If you have any experience with anything similar or different of what we got in here, like I don't know, you have some kumquats that did did great or something that uh, that I say that it, they did great for us but didn't do well for you. If you want to share something, I think it could be good. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Okay, bye.